shoulder straps, abs, and forearms. A little bit of a weird combination. Basically, since this is the fourth day of the week, I'm a little bit beat up from the other days of training, so I just go into the gym and target the areas that I didn't have a chance to do throughout the rest of the week. The muscles that I'm targeting today are generally smaller, and I'm not murdering them with a ton of volume. So it ends up being more rejuvenating than anything. I kind of like to think this is like a glorified active recovery day. 30, 45 minutes, and then I get the heck out. This day really ain't that big of a deal. If I want to skip it, I'll skip it. So what's the benefit for you? Even if you're not following this day exactly as I show you, you can still utilize these exercises and the methods in your own program because they will pack on muscle. Now, if you've been watching my full week of training series and you're trying to design your own program based off of what I do, read the description. Important info in there for you. All right, guys, catch y'all in the gym. So the first exercise we're gonna do is gonna be for the side delts. I'll show you how to do it. We're gonna fatigue the deltoid in two different positions. First is gonna be the shortened position and then the lengthened position. I'm gonna stand really close to the pulley right here and go. Once I can no longer reach the top of the movement here, I'm gonna take a full step out and continue going. So what this does is it changes the point in the movement at which the tension is greatest on the muscle. When I'm standing here, it's really hard at the very, very top. When I take a full step out, it's really hard here, the beginning part of the range of motion. So you can fatigue the entire range of motion by doing something like this. It's a good way to save some time and pack a lot of work in effectively. Movement two is gonna be for the traps. What we're gonna do is a chest supported shrug. Now, reason for the chest supported shrug is that it's gonna take a lot of the bracing and supporting of the weight away from my body. Because after all, today's supposed to be a little bit of an easier day. I'm trying to recover, not kill myself. So what I'm focusing on doing is this. The traps actually have, the upper traps have fibers that run horizontally across the back, not vertically. And I'm training the upper traps specifically here. So I'm gonna strap in so that my grip doesn't limit me. I'm going to protract as far as I can because the traps assist in retraction of the scapula. So by protracting, reaching down, feeling a stretch, I'm gonna provide my traps with the greatest opportunity to contract through a full range of motion. Down, rounding the shoulders, and then pinching back as hard as I can. Okay, now we're moving to the abs. What we're gonna do is a very simple superset. Let me show you how to do it. So we're gonna get a nice decline bench. Lock myself in, and we're gonna do a tempo negative decline crunch. So I'm gonna start back here. I'm gonna allow my rib cage to flare up to the ceiling. See how I have a little bit of space right down here? See how there's a little bit of an arch in my back? As I go up, I'm gonna think about pulling my rib cage down and driving my lower back into the bench. And I'm gonna pull myself up to the top, crunching my rib cage down, and I'm gonna feel an incredible contraction in my abs here. I'm gonna crunch down, driving my rib cage down into my belly and hold this contraction for about one second. And then I'm gonna slowly unravel back. Basically, you can think of it almost as like you're a fruit roll up, unraveling back like this and allowing your rib cage to flare down at the bottom. So we're gonna come pretty much to failure within one or two reps and then immediately turn around and do a lying hip raise or a lying knee tuck. Just choose whichever one suits you best. Whatever you're holding onto, you're gonna be driving your grip up into it, almost like you're trying to take your hands on that object and throwing it, okay? So here, boom, locked in. Then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point my feet straight up to the ceiling, my heels to the ceiling, and I'm gonna drive them up. So I'm gonna tuck my belly button up to the ceiling. That's a good way to think of it. If this is a little hard for you, you can just do a knee tuck like like this, allowing my rib cage to flare at the bottom and then driving and pulling my knees back to my chin. Okay, 
so now we're moving on to forearms. It's a nice, easy way to end the session. This is completely optional. Oftentimes I'll skip this because honestly, my forearms are pretty developed and I don't need a whole lot of extra work, but if I wanna see a little extra growth, I'll throw this stuff in. So this one's really simple. Just a standing wrist curl. So step back from the cable a little ways with a straight bar. I'm gonna keep my wrists in their position, not allowing them to drift up or down. So it's almost like I'm fighting them down just a little bit, a little pressure downwards. And I'm gonna think about tucking my pinkies to the ceiling. Boom, just like that. The contraction you get with this is absolutely incredible. So I hold on to it for like one second at the top and then slowly release down. Typically for forearm work with any movement that I do, I like to keep it in the 10 to maybe 15 rep range. I can go heavier, but when I go heavier and I'm forced to be limited to like six or eight reps, it's harder for me to hold proper form. So that's why I like to do 10 reps or 15, coming really close to failure in that realm. We were just training the flexors of the forearm doing that. Now we're gonna switch sides and we're gonna train the extensors. Here's what I'm gonna do. Take a D handle, put it on a low cable setting, and I'm gonna start doing reverse curls. Now, this is a good way to do it, but you can also do this. You can take this off hand, pin it into the side of your body, place the other hand on top of it, and you're gonna basically take any cheating out of the movement. There's another way that you can provide stability to this movement. You can take your arm and rest it right into the back of this post here. You can take your off hand, pin it on the side of your body and then do your curls like this. Whenever you provide more stability to a movement, you're going to be able to recruit more motor units to exhaust the musculature you're targeting for growth. But today for me, what I'm doing is stand here like this for a few sets, just holding the top, resisting down, then I'm going to do a little walking on the treadmill and then get the heck out of here. guys that's the session i hope you guys enjoyed it come back next time for day five friday it's gonna be my second chest and tricep day catch y'all later train alongside me in my training app where i provide all of my exact weekly workouts in immense detail you can follow this plan exactly as it's written or you can do what some people do and just use it as a reference to help construct their own workouts however you choose to use it my workouts and coaching are going to be there for you i take care of the planning all you have to do is show up all of us on the app put in the work every week and we'd love to have you be a part of it so if you'd like to join us sign up through the website myliftfitness.com it'll walk you through the process of setting up your profile and then you'll be able to log in through the app